Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. I would be presenting a case of carcinoma gingival buccal sulcus. Uh, a 58 year old lady, resident of Puri, housewife, she presented in the OPD with chief complaint of a non healing ulcer on the right lower jaw and inner aspect of cheek for past two to three months. Uh, the ulcer is progressively increasing in size and it is associated with burning and pain sensation over the ulcer and it bleeds on uh, brushing the teeth. There is no history of any numbness or sensation change over the chin. There is no uh, other lesion elsewhere in the mouth or any discharge from the lesion. There is no history of halitosis, fever, difficulty in solving of food, alteration of speech, restricted mouth opening, reduced appetite or recent weight loss, uh, recent change of voice. There is no history of any exposure to radiation or heavy metals or history of any sharp tooth. No history suggestive of uh, breathlessness, hemopsis, bone pain, jaundice, seizures, or headache. Patient had a history of tooth extraction two years back for uh, pain and dental caries. Uh, there is no comorbidity and uh, no history of any other surgical intervention in past except from uh, a biopsy from the <coughs> There is no history of any trauma to both the upper and lower limb in past. A uh, patient takes mixed Indian diet, which is not very spicy. She was habituated to Kheni for more than 10 years, and now she has stopped it for past three to four months. She used to keep it for prolonged duration and especially during nighttime while sleeping. She is not allergic to any known drug or substance. Her bladder and bowel habit, sleep and appetite is normal. What is Kheni? Sorry, sir. What is Kheni? Kheni, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, that they mix uh, tobacco lime they mix with lime and keep it inside their uh, mouth okay Benka, what is the implication of uh, lime in the etiopathogenesis of uh, cancer progression sir uh, it also acts as a uh, inciting factor for uh, uh, initiation of uh, malignancy because okay. it it will keep on irritating uh, the uh, mucosa and as a result of which there could be inflammation and other changes and that may lead to ulceration and then it may progress to malignancy. Hello? Yes. What, what of beetle beetle also? Sorry, sir? Yes, sir. Beetle, beetle. Ah, beetle. yes, Beetle also, sir. Okay. So all three things are independently carcinogenic, actually. Ah, so yes. Important when they are being used together. It mm, causes yes. a sort of chemical bond, the line, which mm. increases the exposure of tobacco to deeper. Huh, yes, sir. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. On uh, examination, on uh, general physical examination, patient, <laughs> patient is alert, conscious, and cooperative. She is oriented to time, place, and person. There is no pyloricterus clubbing cyanosis or any generalized lymphadenopathy. There is no pedal edema. Her BMI was 18.75. Her vitals are pulse uh, taken on uh, left radial artery, 76 per minute. Blood pressure, 110 by 76 uh, millimeter of mercury. Respiratory rate, 14. Temperature, she is afebrile uh, during the time of examination. Uh, on uh, inspection of uh, uh, oral Oral cavity. On intraoral examination, there is a solitary ulcerative lesion present on the right buccal mucosa, which is extending to the uh, gingival buccal sulcus uh, with a dimension of uh, 6 into 3 centimeter approximately. Anteriorly, it is extending uh, uh, about 2 centimeter from the right commissure and uh, inferiorly uh, uh, along the gingival buccal sulcus, it is extending towards the lateral incisor. And posteriorly, it uh, it is extending till RMT, but RMT uh, retromolar trigone it looks free. Uh, it is involving the gingiva of the mandible, and uh, superiorly, it is extending about three centimeter, uh, like uh, from the upper GPS, the upper may, margin. May I interrupt? May I interrupt? Can ah, you yes, hear sir. me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. You did not talk about mouth opening. See, we are going to look at the patient. Uh, you didn't talk about mouth opening. I don't know. Where maybe subsequently I'm going to mention it. Yes, I have uh, in extra oral examination. I have said, sir, mouth opening. Ah, uh, so so you uh, okay. 
Yes, sir. The ulcer, uh, the margins of ulcer is well defined. It is raised. Floor was covered with slough. Floor of mouth looks normal. The tongue movements were normal. There is no other lesion anywhere in the oral cavity. No leukoplakia, erythroplakia, or any submucous fibrosis was seen. There is no history of any, uh, sorry, there is no loose tooth noted. Uh, halitosis was there. Absent right first and second molar. There <clears throat> was tobacco staining present uh, on the teeth. An extra oral examination, her mouth opening was 4 cm. There is no fullness or visible swelling over uh, cheek or neck. And the overlying skin over the cheek was normal. May I? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I think uh, in the inspection, in, in the history taking, you yes. said there is no halitosis. Right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now you are telling there is halitosis. Uh, yes, sir. actually, the patient didn't complain of uh, halitosis, but when I examined her, as soon as like she opened her mouth, um, it was a bad breath for me. So I mentioned Clear. it. Clear. Go ahead. Yes. Sir. Uh, on palpation, all the inspectory findings were corroborated. Uh, there is a solitary ulcer present over right gingivobuccal sulcus and buccal mucosa, which is uh, bleeding uh, on touching. Uh, there is no induration. Uh, noted on the surrounding. It is adherent to the mandible. It is not mobile and it is tender. Uh, uh, mandible is uh, widened as compared to the rest of the site uh, on bi-digital palpation. The uh, up, uh, lower GBS is not free. Uh, RMT, commissure and the upper gingivobuccal sulcus is free. Uh, skin over the cheek is pinchable. On examination of neck, on examination. Uh, can, I, uh, can I interrupt you here? Yeah? Yes, sir. What is the occlusion of the patient and is it important to examine it preoperatively? Uh, yes, sir. Occlusion should be... Uh... So what is it in this patient? It was, sir, uh, it was normal. How do you describe normal occlusion? What is uh, normal? Yeah. What is normal occlusion? What normal occlusion? Uh, yes, sir. When the cusps of the premolar... Uh, uh, they will be in contact uh, both the upper and lower. Whose classification is this? Sir, I, I'm forgetting the name. Homework. Ang <laughs> Angles classification? Yes. I think it, the reason it's important is because if you end up doing a bony reconstruction with fibula or something, your endpoint on that day is proper occlusion. So oh, if it yeah. is deranged pre-operatively, you need to be aware of it. Yes, sir. For any reason. And you have to describe the temporal joint movements also. Yeah. Okay? Yes, sir. And uh, <laughs> what are the other parts of the oral cavity which you need to comment upon site-wise? Uh, so we should uh, examine the opposite buccal mucosa mm -hmm. and uh, uh, gingival buccal sulcus, the okay. opposite One. mandible. Then... Oh. Uh, yeah. Tongue, floor of mouth. Mandible? Uh, Opposite side. I mean, you can see the mandible, right? Hi. Tongue, floor of mouth. Fine. Yes. Upper, yeah. uh, upper uh, uh, gingival buccal palate. Palate. Sorry. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Palate okay. and the tonsillar uh, uh, pillars. And uh, okay. so you posterior palate. So you all these when you're presenting are normal, visibly normal or whatever. Uh, yes, tobacco sir, chewer, I, I, yeah. tobacco chewer, what are the pre-malignant lesions you expect to find? Uh, sir, in a tobacco chewer, we will find, uh, we can find leukoplakia, uh, erythroplakia, and uh, submucosal fibrosis. And okay, speckled uh, erythroplakia, leukoplakia. Which, which of these has the most malignant uh, potential? Uh, erythroplakia, sir. Good. Fine, proceed. Okay, sir. On palpation of the neck, uh, there was no uh, swelling felt and no clinically palpable uh, lymph nodes. I've examined the patient uh, while standing on the um, behind. What are you examining? So, firstly, I examined the submandible and submandible lymph node, then the upper jugular, middle jugular, and lower jugular lymph node, and then the uh, level 5 lymph nodes by slightly flexing on the uh, 
examining side to relax the neck muscles. Then uh, so systemic examination, uh, I have ex uh, her chest was uh, chest abdomen and spine uh, was uh, within normal limit. There was no added sound in the chest, uh, chest no <clears throat> uh, abdomen, no organomegaly or any free fluid was uh, uh, felt. Spine and uh, bony tenderness was not elicited uh, and uh, her uh, CNS uh, and CVS was uh, normal. And I have examined the potential flap donor site as bilateral lower limb, which I found to be normal without any scars and <clears throat> Uh, both the anterior uh, 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 dorsalis pedis and posterior tibial artery pulsations were felt, which were normal. So, what do you mean by potential flap donor site? Uh, <clears throat> sir, because as means you've got a plan in your mind. Yes, sir. Because sir, uh, uh, as because this is a uh, this looks like a malignant lesion with the uh, involvement of uh, mandibles. So, mm -hmm. uh, I would like uh, to. Uh, after the resection, uh, it will need a reconstruction of uh, bone and a, a skin. So that is you're, what I have. You're anticipating a bony defect on the lateral side of the mandible. If yes. I say I will do a soft tissue free flap, so you can have the upper limb also as a donor site? Uh, yes. supposedly said bilateral lower limb. That is why I'm raising this point. Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh... Priyanka, presume uh, you are, we are okay with it, that you'll need a bony reconstruction. What all things will you see exactly in the limb, apart from uh, the pulses and no scars? Are there, is there anything you want to look out for? Uh, yes, sir, sir. We will uh, look out for present of any uh, varicosities or any uh, deep vein thrombosis, any existing uh, skin condition, any skin oh, diseases, if they are present or not. So we will... Uh, Look all else? One more thing, very important in uh, tobacco chewers, uh, in substance abusers. Something to do with uh, peripheral vascular perfusion. Oh. Yes, exactly. Fine. What are the signs of peripheral vascular disease you want to look for? Uh, so we will ask uh, the patient if they are having a, a claudication, like a, a, a intermittent signs. Signs. Sign. Yeah. Okay. Uh, may I have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. What would be the resultant defect after excision? Sir, that I have mentioned. It's come to, it's it's coming come to later on. So you're looking at uh, loss of hair, thinned out dermis, shiny skin. Oh, yes, sir. And there are some nail changes also. So these are telltale signs of peripheral vascular disease. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Yeah. And in a, when you palpate the pulse, what do you see? Uh, so when we'll palpate the pulse, we will see the rate rhythm. Uh, the uh, That is okay. What I'm saying is, would you see anti-grade, retrograde? I'm just giving you a hint. Okay. So, okay, so you should do Harvey's test or Harvey's sign and look at an retrograde and an anti-grade flow. Oh, yes, sir. That might give you some hint of if there is some potential problem. Okay, yes, sir. Priyanka? Yes. Are, are palpable DP and PET 100% safeguard against uh, anatomical variations in uh, peroneal vasculature anomalies? No, sir. Uh, like They are not. But uh, still, we would like to uh, do it as a part of our uh, examination. Okay. Fair enough. We'll come to it later. Yes, sir. So, so my provisional diagnosis is a 58-year-old lady with an ulcerated lesion over right gingivobuccal sulcus and right buccal mucosa, likely of malignant etiology, uh, most likely a carcinoma right lower gingivobuccal sulcus, uh, clinically T4A N0 MX, uh, stage 4. Then... Very <clears throat> uh, yeah. I would like to proceed uh, by doing certain investigation to confirm uh, my diagnosis. As this patient already underwent a biopsy, uh, so we will do an edge wedge biopsy from the ulcer. Uh, then uh, staging workup will include a puff cheek uh, C contrast enhanced CT scan of head and neck, a triple endoscopy, a chest x-ray uh, or an HRCT thorax and uh, ultrasonography of abdomen and pelvis if we see any uh, deranged uh, liver function test or uh, if patient uh, on examination if we find any 
a uh, free fluid or so. And for donor site, uh, I would like to do one second. You are doing as a routine ultrasound abdominal okay. pelvis. No, sir. No, sir. A... Not as a routine. No. Only no, in this patient. In this patient, what are your reasons for doing an ultrasound abdominal pelvis? Sir, uh, as a Part of staging workup. So that means routine. So a person with a oral cancer, mm. I don't know, you can, uh, we can debate about this, but ultrasound not abdomen needs. and pelvis is not really required. We don't need, sir. Even a doctor, we don't need. Okay, what so do you mean by triple endoscopy? Uh, say triple endoscopy uh, means uh, uh, laryngoscopy, esophagoscopy, and uh, Bron bronchoscopy. Huh. Laryngoscopy is done with the advent of CT. We Only don't... laryngoscopy. We don't oh. need it. We don't need the list too. We don't uh, need all that. Yes, sir. And uh, Priyanka, yes, sir. is there a justification behind doing all these three uh, these investigations? Can you tell me uh, e for each of them? Oh, yes, sir. Sir, starting from the tissue diagnosis, sir? No, the, the diagnosis is fine. All the staging work. Sir, uh, for... Uh, Contrast enhanced CT scan, uh, like I would like to do it because uh, a CT scan will uh, help me in uh, eliciting the uh, extent of lesion, uh, the involvement of surrounding structure, then involvement of uh, uh, bone, and the uh, because she is a clinically uh, uh, N zero neck, so if any uh, lymph node present or not, like we will uh, be able to see in CT. Related to the etiology. Anything else? Uh, what is what is the incidence of synchronous metagranous malignancies in because of uh, being a common etiology? There is theory of field cancerization, no? Yes, sir, yes. Sir. So, what is the percentage of patients in whom you can found an, uh, one more lesion in the oral cavity upon imaging or in the thorax on X-ray of this? So, that is the reason for all this workup. There is yes, a particular sir. percentage where you can find another lesion. Uh, so I'm not sure, but uh, I think 15 to I'm 20. Okay. <laughs> yes. Oh. And Thanks. then for donor side, I would like to do a bilateral wait, lower limb. Wait, wait, please. Yes, sir. What do you look for or exclude by ultrasonography of uh, abdomen and pelvis? Uh, sir, in ultrasonography of abdomen and pelvis, we will uh, look for any... Uh, 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 free fluid that is present in the abdomen and uh, any uh, uh, metastasis to liver, any liver uh, hepatomegaly or any lesion that can be catched due, uh, by doing ultrasonography. If you find hepatomegaly, what will you proceed? What will you do? Sir, if uh, hepatom if uh, as along with hepatomegaly, there is a deranged liver function test then uh, we would like to do a contrast enhanced CT scan of abdomen and pelvis uh, to rule out uh, because... Okay. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead, got it. And for donor side, we will do a bilateral uh, lower limb CT angiography to rule out any uh, abnormality in the anatomy of uh, vessels. Why not? Uh, why are you yeah, investigation is... investigation first up? Why not a color doppler? Uh, so yeah. we can... We can do color Doppler, but then color Doppler uh, won't tell us about the abnormal, uh, like uh, peronia magna, or uh, if it is like bifurcating very distally. So that cannot be uh, catched by a uh, color Doppler. And also, uh, color Doppler won't uh, show us the uh, if any uh, atherosclerotic changes are there or uh, not. Why the contrary, no? As a practice, are you all doing bilateral CT angiography? That is, I think, the question. I think this is a lot of debate. You can We can have a lot of discussion on this. But CT angiography as a routine for all patients where you're going to elevate the bone from the leg is a point which needs to be elaborated if you're going to routinely ad advise this. Color Doppler per se has shown to be more effective in diagnosing uh, any peripheral vascular problems uh, than CT angiography per se. And CT angiography is more invasive per se than a color Doppler. Cause, of course, is a factor. 
So, yeah. of course, it will vary from center to center. Yes. I would advise that if your hospital is doing CT angio for all fibula, then you can say that as a student that in our hospital that is the practice. Uh, but if yes. that is not the practice, but you have to have an answer for what is the incidence. What is the incidence of peronia magna? Uh, sir, mm, two to five percent. <laughs> <laughs> very high. Online point two to point five percent. Okay, okay, point two to point five. So you are doing point two to point five percent. You are doing uh, CT angio for all the patients to detect it. It's not okay. cost effective. But uh, sir, so we are doing routinely, so that is I have mentioned. Okay. So that is fine. If you are doing in your hospital, but you have to have a you have to have a justification to uh, uh, say that. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. And then uh, we would like to do blood investigation to know the status of patient as well as to get a, a pre anesthetic uh, fitness. Uh, so this is the CT scan report of uh, which was given by our radiologist. It was a heterogeneously enhancing soft tissue thickening involving right buccal mucosa, gingival buccal sulcus, mandibular gingiva, and 4 mm thickness of cortex, likely of neoplastic origin, and RMT looks free. So with the, all the... Uh, Can you tell us the findings on the image? You've read the report, I know. But have you interpreted it yourself? Uh, yes, you sir. The puff, uh, the puff cheek appearance, what does it show? Obviously, yes, you've got multiple images, so it's not very clear. Yes. But if you could have put one image and showed us, and anyway, you have to be clear about the findings. Yes, Don't sir. read the report in the exam. Huh? Yes, sir. You cannot get the report in the exam. Uh, yes, sir. So here we can see on the first image that uh, there is on the normal side, because the affected side is right side, we can see the normal side, it is the uh, uh, lining is uh, smooth. But here from the uh, uh, center, uh, we can see that uh, on the right side, it is irregular and the uh, thickness is more on okay. that side. And so here that... the gingival buccal sulcus is, looks free. And but hmm. here is uh, uh, like involved. So uh, roughly it is crossing the midline, right? Uh, yes, sir. As per your image, the, 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 the effect is right from the midline or just about across the midline to the right side. Mm. Yes, sir. Okay. And then mandible, no erosions or are uh, there erosions? Actually, sir, in this image, uh, I can't really comment on the erosion because it is not very evident. So, okay. huh. so that you should look for. The yes. other thing that you look for is? Uh, neck nodes. No, neck nodes is fine. I'm talking about the mandible. Uh, the inferior dental nerve, uh, canal. Inferior dental yes. canal, yes. Widened or not. Widened or not, right. Yes, sir. Because this is involving the mental nerve area, right? According to the lesion, it looks like a mental nerve area is being involved. So you should look at inferior dental canal anyway to see for its pathology. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Neck nodes? No neck nodes in this? No neck nodes, sir. True. So my plan would be a wide local fixation of ulcer with one centimeter margins all around and uh, an ipsilateral supramohyoid neck dissection, a segmental mandibulectomy, and then uh, reconstruction using a contralateral free fibula osteocutaneous flap for lining and bone defect. <clears throat> you just said the uh, lesion is crossing midline, right? Um, uh, actually, huh, uh, sir, uh, in the... Uh, you want to revise your neck dissection plan? Uh, uh, no, sir. Actually, sir, uh, in this uh, image, the extent of lesion is only till the lateral incisor, sir. Okay. Yeah, but that is on, on clinical on examination. Clinical. No, on imaging, it is causing, no? So you imaging your... Go beyond. Uh, then, sir, bilateral supramohyoid neck okay. dissection should be done. Okay. So, presuming it was on one side only, why when will you still do the opposite side neck? Contralateral neck dissection. Uh, if, the swell, uh, if the ulcer is only on the one side. 
Yeah, ulcer is on one side, palpable nodes are one side. Is there any situation you would still do the opposite neck? Which which level of node belongs to both sides? Uh, sub sub mental and so level one A is positive. Level one A. That's an indication for doing the opposite as well. Opposite so side, intersection yeah. also. Okay. okay, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Sir, may, may I proceed, sir? Yeah, sure. No, we still are not sure about your diagnosis. So what is your diagnosis now after your investigation? So you've got a ipsilateral or it is extending contralateral? Mm -hmm. sir, it, because, as... you know, you've just showed us one or two images of radiology on CT scan, so that may not be sufficient to really address what we are talking. If the... Mm -hmm. If the lesion is on one side only, then we are talking about one-sided lesion. If that yeah. crossover is there, then the story changes altogether. It so, was uh, uh, one side only. It is one side. So maybe you should show it in other images. One image is not sufficient to really tell us. One image does show a crossover, but that mm. may not be the story. There may be tilt in the image, so that might give you a wrong impression. Okay. Uh, so, sir, uh, as per this uh, plan, uh, so I would like to... <clears throat> again, again, my question is, what would be the resultant defect? Defect Haan. of the mucosa? Haan. What else? Yes, sir. sir uh, as the uh, lesion was... Uh, huh. The defect, sir, mucosal defect will be around uh, uh, 9 into 7 centimeter. Because uh, uh, the... from where you measure, from where you measure the uh, margin of the defect, sir. Uh, margin of the uh, the uh, the the lesion was six into three centimeter. So we will take one centimeter on e each side. From so where the... you from where you take this uh, one centimeter, sir. Is ideally, visible ulcer margin or something else. You said the there is no. Uh... Huh, ideally, should be taken from the indurated margin. But in, in her case, uh, I couldn't uh, feel any uh, induration. So oh. I've taken it from the ulcer margin only. Uh, so it was six into three centimeters. So uh, if we'll take all around, then it will be six, six, six seven, So eight. you have eight. taken a one centimeter margin from the visible user? Yes, sir. Okay, then depth? Uh, depth, sir, uh, I have uh, taken uh, because it was extending till the lateral incisor. So, uh, the bone I have uh, taken anteriorly till the central central incisor, uh, till the mentum. And uh, on the posterior side, because uh, RMT, uh, the retromolar trigon was free, but uh, in order to take the negative margin, uh, the excision was still angle, like I have taken it till angle, angle of mandible. And towards the cheek, muscles, okay. the, and the skin? Yes, sir. And the skin was free, so uh, uh, we, we will spare the skin and the subcutaneous uh, fat, and the rest of the um, things we will uh, take out. And the overlying gingiva uh, over the mandible will also be taken along with that. The length of the mandible, which you will uh, remove? The length will be from the mentum to the angle, sir. So, I calculated it as uh, 8 centimeter, and uh, I have taken the total bony length as uh, 9 centimeter for 1 centimeter as osteotomy. But uh, why are you taking the angle? Because, sir, <clears throat> uh, the... The RMT is though not involved, but uh, to take the adequate uh, margin, uh, that is why I have taken it till what angle. What is the reason for taking the angle in a mandible? And which is, angle means what? Angle means, what is the resection line at that level? Mm. So, like you said, no, we were discussing of inferior dental canal. Canal, it starts from there, no? So what? Where? Where does it start? What is that point called? And the mandible. The foramen, mandible foramen. 
So how it is related to related to the excision? How the dental canal you have to take out? Why it is taken in consideration? Hmm. Because sir, uh, uh, if the cortex is involved and as this patient is edentulous also, so there is a possibility that the tumor can infiltrate from the cortex into the uh, canal. And if uh, we won't uh, excise it, like we won't take it, it may spread along the nerve. So that is why we have to take it Peritoneal out. Peritoneal spread is one of the methods of spread of malignancies. That is why you need to include the canal. Which, which pathology uh, is known to have peritoneal spreads in uh, head neck oral cavity? Yeah. Which one? Mm. No, sir, yeah. salivary gland uh, mucopedermal. No. Adenoid so there you are justified with this line, but in this case where CT shows no infiltration, no expansion of the marrow, you mm -hmm. your resection has to be one centimeter non-anatomical segmental resection. Okay. Yes. Yes. Fine. Uh, now, Priyanka, yes, why have you chosen this uh, split approach? Can you justify this? Where is your predominant tumor? Towards the in the center midline or laterally? Uh, sir, it is. Uh... Can you draw and show where is your tumor superimposed yes. in this lateral image? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll. So the uh, tumor is mostly. Okay. It is somewhat like this. So now, if you take your midline split as you have shown. And you get a close margin on the tumor and have to revise the skin. What mm. will happen to the lip and the surrounding skin? Your... Uh, it will be... Hello? We might yeah. compromise the vascular. We, it might... Uh, can you, can you do something else? Preempt this and do something else here? Uh, so to let's make... go one step back. Do you need to split the lip? Your opening is 4 centimeters. Your buccal mucosa is normal. Hmm. You are taking a neck incision. Can you manage without splitting the lip? Uh, yes, sir. We can uh, raise the... Like, we can do an intraoral uh, excision of the buccal mucosa uh, lesion. I'll give you the split uh, because it requires a little more technical expertise. But mm -hmm. which split would you choose here? An angle split or a midline split given the location of the tumor? Because if, if it's a positive margin and you excise skin, you just have to reconstruct it. You don't have to worry about rest of the lip's vascularity. Ah, uh, yes, sir. For a lateral lesion, an angle split would be, if you have to split, might be a better approach. So, so when do you do a lip split? What sort of lesion you would do a lip split? Uh, sir, a lesion in which uh, we need, uh, we, we have to do a mandible excision. This is also uh, mandible excision you're doing. You don't uh, need which sort of lesion would you do a lip split and which why do you don't want to do a lip split why what is against uh, what is in favor and against doing a lip split so lip split uh, 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 the favor in favor we, we will get adequate exposure and mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, the anterior part of mandible we will be able to um, cut uh, do osteotomy and uh, like remove it in total along with the rest so of the lip. You get better exposure with a lip split, but is it required? It also has the disadvantages of scar, edema, persistent vascularity issues at that level. Yes, sir. So we tend to avoid posterior lesions mm -hmm. near the ITF or near the angle. Yes, you might require. A lip split to get exposure, but that also depending on expertise, you can do it. So, I think in this patient, we don't require lip split. You can get away or maximum and lip split. Okay. Okay. And uh, say so because I am planning to do a supramohyoid neck dissection. So the neck uh, incision I have given here is a utility incision. So to clear the level one, two, and three, uh, level one, two, three lymph nodes. Uh, uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, continue. Yes, sir. sir, I have marked uh, on the contralateral fibula 
the uh, lining and uh, for bone. So here I have taken the uh, lower third and uh, middle third portion of uh, fibula as uh, the donor because uh, and we'll be discarding the rest of the bone that is marked in yellow the lower uh, six centimeter and four centimeter uh, lower uh, six and six centimeter uh, we will leave uh, to prevent ankle and knee joint st uh, instability and also to preserve the uh, vessels and nerve uh, on the superior aspect then we'll mark and uh, we'll mark our skin pedal uh, after Yes, sir. Why yeah, has it chosen the contralateral side? You mentioned it very clearly, contralateral side. Why? Uh, uh, sir, because uh, we, we, we have to uh, reconstruct the uh, lining and the bone defect only. Uh, I am assuming there won't be any skin uh, loss, like outer cover. So if we will use a contralateral uh, fibula, then uh, the lateral surface, which is uh, the uh, surface where we'll do plating, it uh, uh, it will be on the uh, like outer side, and the skin uh, pedal along with the uh, uh, perforators will automatically will go inside. But uh, in if we take the ipsilateral side then we have to uh, rotate that septum over the uh, lateral surface and uh, it on doing that uh, like if uh, like there are people who are taking it but uh, doing that might uh, damage those uh, perforators so that is why i have uh, marked a contralateral fibula not that is not really the reason and uh, see the thing is she is a 50 year old female uh, yes, rest sir. of the dentition is good. You can consider osteointegration in her. So, mm -hmm. what will be the implication? Which surface will come for the osteointegration if you choose this contralateral side? And where will your pedicle be? I'm giving oh, yes. you a clue to, for having maneuverability here. Yes, sir. Sir, I, uh, I've, I've uh, taken the dist uh, like our pedicle will be posteriorly. Okay. Uh, and uh, I've uh, taken this, uh, the distal portion, distal four centimeter, it will come anteriorly. It will, it will get fixed with the... Get that. So which surface will come to facing the maxilla of the fibula? And is it the ideal surface for uh, putting teeth? Mm. The posterior... Um... Where do you put your implants? And you still have a way out even after doing this. So. Sorry, sir. See, uh, the, the septum being at the lower border of mandible and the paddle going over the bone is not a problem. We all do it routinely. Mm -hmm. It's not an yes. issue. Oh. Okay. So now take that factor out. Now tell me what would be your choice if you are considering osteointegration. Which surface would you want to be there? What are the surfaces of fibula? Uh, say surfaces, lateral, medial, and posterior surface. Okay. So what muscle inserts on the medial surface? Medial surface, sir, uh, tibialis, uh, and... Okay. So is that surface suitable for osteointegration? Mm, no. You have seen a fibula harvest? Yes, sir. Okay. So what surface is suitable for plating irrespective of whatever you do generally? Uh, lateral right? So that leaves us with two surfaces to put the implants on. Yeah? Yes, sir. So most often it's the uh, this surface which is more suitable, medial surface. Okay? So if you go left to left, means you go ipsilateral with pedicle towards the RMT, the osteointegration surface is more suitable. Fibula has variations. Uh, there are, depending on muscle insertions, it might be spiky or odd. So mm -hmm. you can see that and change, but generally that is suitable. And this defect is, as you said, three centimeters from upper alveolus. So you don't need too much paddle to go uh, inside. So if mm -hmm. you have a situation where upper alveolus, lower tongue, or there is a larger intraoral defect, mm -hmm. what you are doing is justified. Fair enough. Okay? And the way out here is, you can say you can take the pedicle from anteriorly, you still have the maneuverability, because it's a pretty anterior defect. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. Okay. So Priyanka, yeah. yes. you have cited your bone quite right near the middle, roughly around the middle of the leg, right? Hmm. 
What is this yellow mark that uh, the lower part that you've marked? That is what? That you'll will, discard. Yes, that Your six discard. centimeter is like the lower border of the mark that you have made. Yes, sir. Okay, we understand that. Then you have kept a gap. Then you've taken the bone. Yes, sir. Why? Uh, why? So the more distal you place your bone, you get a longer and easily reachable pedicle, right? Uh, yes, sir. So if you sight, your skin island is extending quite high up. Mm. Number one. Number two, where are the perforators situated in a fibula osteocutaneous slab? Commonly, usually. Uh, sir, we will we'll get the perforators along the posterior interim yes. septum. Uh, usually, sir, uh, from so the medium you are going, going to first do a Doppler, right? Oh, yes, so have, or you have, if you've done a CT and you, you can also mark, but Doppler would be done. So mm. where do you look for the perforators? Or you just carry on looking along the whole posterior length border? Uh, no, sir. We uh, Actually, sir, most uh, of the like maximum perforators, they are located in the middle third. It is in the junction of the lower third and middle third. Yes, there will be some below that, some above that. So if you mark your fibula into thirds, mm -hmm. that is the standard procedure to find your perfect is very easily done. That's why mm -hmm. then you sight your skin island on that. And then your bone, obviously oh. the six centimeter from the distal end is sacrosanct. After that, mm -hmm. you take your bone. Exactly. If your skin is requirement is larger, then you might have to adjust your pedicle, uh, adjust your bone length accordingly. But when we elevate above the six centimeter, we elevate that whole bone. Then we take a decision once the defect is created. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Carry on. So there's one way you can justify this, Priyanka. Yes, Is sir. that the lower end of the bone often has a bit of a torsion. There is a curve mm -hmm. and the surface are torsion. So plating and this becomes a little tricky sometimes. So if you have a Doppler signal at in where you have marked your pattern, you can do that. It's fine. Mm. But then you don't have to do the osteotomy beyond it. You can just do the osteotomy where your distal end is. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, sir, uh, like... Um... I have uh, like I have taken the contralateral side and I have marked this uh, two bones with the one centimeter gap for a close wedge osteotomy to bend the bone and then fix it using many plates and screw. Uh, you are going to do an osteotomy as a close wedge? Uh, yes, sir. So this, what you are marked here is the outer surface, right? That is the plating surface. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, so your wedge is going to be on the superior border. Huh. Yes, sir. That, uh, yes. So you don't have to cut to one centimeter to, to get your close wedge because your wedge is going to be like a V, more on the inner surface and less on the outer surface. Uh, yes, sir. So you, you can't pre-decide your osteotomy prior to the excision. Hmm. Yes, sir. This has to be done. So that also you have to say that once I get my specimen out, either you have got a model and you've hmm. done it, you're showing a model, of course, but usually we don't do models for a standard mag mandible resection. But uh, if you don't have a model, you wait for the specimen out and you have pre-planned it. Otherwise, you don't have a pre-plan, so you can use how you're going to define where you're going to do your osteotomies. How are you going to decide where to do? You can't pre-decide it unless oh, you yes, add cam and all that. I'm not talking. We are not going into that. Okay. Yes. So that can be decided only after examining the excised specimen. After the defect has been created and the yes, specimen sir. is out. Yes. <clears throat> so you know your excision. Is this excision uh, might change on the table? Uh, might change depending on what uh, the resection uh, resection team is doing. Yes. So, okay. So you are, first you are elevating your fibula. You're not doing an osteotomy. 
the whole fibula which is uh, to be elevated is elevated, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes. So First we can move from uh, there. Yes, sir. Carry on. Carry on. So, sir, uh, like, uh, firstly, uh, uh, like after positioning the patient, uh, we'll uh, we'll keep uh, some support on the buttock of the patient, and uh, with the hip flexed and knee flexed and foot on the uh, table, and slightly dorsiflexion, we will firstly will give the anterior incision. So, why do you do put the sandbag under the buttock? Uh, to make sir, uh, it uh, slightly internally rotated and so that it doesn't fall. Yeah, good. Carry on. Then uh, uh, after uh, giving the anterior incision, we will firstly go suprafacially and we'll uh, uh, preserve the superficial peroneal nerve and the uh, some fascia over the peroneal, uh, this sorry, uh, huh, peroneus longus tendon. Because uh, if... Uh, that uh, is uh, breach. then if we have to put a graft over it, it won't stick to it. Then once uh, the peroneus tendon is gone, we will uh, go, uh, we'll split, cut the fascia and we'll go uh, uh, subfacially and then we'll identify our perforators. Uh, and then we will start uh, dissecting the peroneal muscles from the fibula, fibular attachment, keeping a cuff of uh, peroneal muscles uh, there, around 2 mm or so. And then after... Uh, so the peroneal muscle, a little bit is left with the fibula. Yes. Sir. That's what you're saying. What is that called? Mm. When you leave little chunks of muscle, it's called cobblestoning. Ah, cobblestoning. Okay. okay. And then why are you doing it? Why don't you face it from the fibula? That is easier. Uh, yes, sir. because sir, uh, uh, if we we'll keep some amount of uh, muscle over the fibula, uh, later on the patient has to undergo um, post-op radiation. For so, that? Uh -huh. You're keeping so, it to protect it from radiation. You're, to prote you're keeping it to pr protect the periosteum because okay. it's mostly going to supply, the bone is going to be supplied by a periosteal blood mm, Yes, sir. That is the reason. Okay, sir. Then after uh, uh, releasing the all the peroneal muscles, we'll enter the anterior compartment. We'll uh, release, uh, we'll cut the interosseous membrane and we can then visualize the anterior tibial artery after uh, no, no, no. You see, you made your anterior incision. Ah. Your flap. Yes, sir. Are you going to extend that incision? Ah, yes, sir. We'll extend oh, the incision distally and... You didn't say that. Did. How do you extend? Where do you extend? Which way do you extend? Uh, sir, we'll extend the incision... Uh... Along the posterior border? Uh, sir, we'll extend the incision uh, like this. Uh... Bottom. Uh -huh. And like this, sir. So you're going to the neck of the fibula. Where are the posterior tibial vessels or the peroneal vessels? Ha, uh, sir. Uh, mark, like, it out, uh, mark it out. Mark out where the peroneal vessels should be in a surface mark. Sir, there, uh, at medial to the fibula up to the neck. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yes. We won't go till here, like till the osteotomy side. That is okay. I'm not talking about the bone. Where are the posterior tib Where does the where are you? Popliteal fossa? Popliteal fossa is here, sir. Right? So, after how long does it travel before it bifurcates into? Posterior tibial and... If you look at the posterior leg, can you mm -hmm. now show us where the peroneal vessel will be on this patient? So, peroneal vessels will be... It does not come to the neck. It is much lower down. So, you obliquely take a line. I can't control your pen. Yes, so, sir. from the popliteal fossa, you ah. take an oblique line down. Yeah. Go down obliquely. Little, yeah. Somewhere there. Yeah. Let's say you draw that. Yes. So, if you're going to make incision here, you'll have to reflect that skin so much if you want a more proximal pedicle. Hmm. Okay. So, your incision goes partly on the posterior border, then curves along as you have shown. 
Mm. Yes, okay. Oh. So, because you don't want to take the neck of the fibula and the posterior tibial nerve is there. Mm. Yes, sir. Carry on. Yes, sir. So then uh, we'll uh, cut the interosseous. Any anterior incision? You've dissected the peroneal muscles. Yes, then sir. you come to the anterior fascia and enter the anterior compartment. anterior compartment, right? Yes. You, I know you said it already. You come to the anterior compartment and what do you look at? So what, we'll do you, what should you be careful of there, anterior compartment? Uh, so we, we should be careful of the anterior tibial vessel and the yes, yes. So morally, mostly more proximally. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. That mm. needs to be seen and preserved, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so then after visualizing then you're going to then you're going to cut your and anterior insulosis membrane, you said. Yes, sir. Now do you I mean this may vary from center to center. Do you do your osteotomies hmm. first and then cut your interosseous membrane or you cut your interosseous membrane first? Uh, sir, we cut the interosseous membrane first, then uh, pro um, proximally and distally, we'll put the harbor elevator and then we'll do the osteotomy. Anyway, I think they, this then vary from center to center. We do our osteotomies first and then it's cut our... It's uh, more convenient. Uh, so it is easier to do. I'll tell you later on. I can carry on, carry on. So then uh, uh, then after doing osteotomy, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll release the rest of the muscles from the fibula. And after... Uh, what rest, rest of, of so You have to be clear now. Don't pick his. <laughs> you have to be more clear. Now yes, you've sir. cut your interosseous membrane. You've done your osteotomies in either end. Your yes, fibula is free. Yes. Means it's disconnected. So what do you do next? Now we'll uh, uh, release the FHL and uh, the tibialis posterior fibers from the fibula. Uh -huh. uh, and then... Uh, uh, after doing that, uh, we will we uh, we can see the uh, posterior tibial vessels. And do you do you, do you uh -huh, okay? Do you make your posterior incision at when do you make your posterior incision now or later on? That also varies. Yes, sir. Once we have visualized the anterior tibial and posterior tibial as two separate uh, uh -huh. vessels, then we will make our posterior incision. And then we'll uh, separate the it from gastro soleus muscle, and then <clears throat> cranially and uh, inferiorly uh, uh, by holding the fibula from both and using a bone holding forceps, we'll dissect off uh, the flexor hallucis longus and the muscle, leaving a two mm cuff around it, and then. Uh, Mm. Then we'll... so the interosseous border of the fibula is an inward deeper structure, right? Yes, sir. It's very deep down. Mm. So how do you get that out? Now you're working behind that border. So mm. that means deeper to that border. So mm. unless you rotate the fibula out yes, sir. externally, yes, sir. you will not be able to access those areas because this is an anterior approach, right? Mm. Yes, sir. So you need to apply traction on that bone that you have cut and the muscles will then spread yes, out, stretch out. Yes, sir. Then it will be easier to external halysis, extensor uh, halysis, uh, flexor, flexor halysis tendon and uh, tibialis posterior can be cut. Mm, yes, sir. Okay. Then, sir, once uh, the fibula is free of all the muscular attachment and only the septum and the skin pedal is uh, left, uh, then uh, after assessing the defect and where the osteotomy is needed, we will uh, mark the point and then uh, uh, we, we will do an in-situ osteotomy and plating. So, we will... No, no, you've, you, you've gone far, far ahead. Anyway, I think we are short of time. No? I don't know. Uh... 
the point yes, we are we are, we, are, we, are we are beyond 8 o'clock <laughs> no beyond problem. 8 o'clock okay yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. no, problem. no, problem. no problem, problem for us not... but maybe problem for everybody else so carry yeah. on carry on we will uh, because this will this can take uh, much much longer time if we carry on like this so, so then, anyway uh, then sir we'll carefully <clears throat> we'll carefully uh, separate the uh, vessel uh, uh, with uh, uh, and between the periosteum and the bone, we'll carefully lift it off to so as to secure our vessel, and we'll uh, remove the periosteum till the point where we want to do our osteotomy, and the rest of the bone will be discarded. And <clears throat> after marking the uh, wedge that we have to cut, the uh, the for the closed wedge osteotomy, the base of which should be away from the like it shouldn't, it should not be uh, facing the pedicle side, like uh, the triangle, base of triangle. We'll cut it after removing the periosteum and putting the Howard between the periosteum and the bone so as to secure the vessel before cutting it. And um, uh, after cutting uh, the wedge, uh, we will uh, bend the bone and we'll uh, remove the periosteum uh, from the lateral surface uh, so as to fix the uh, uh, both the part uh, both the pieces of bone together after this we'll go cranially and uh, we'll do the pedicle dissection and we will ligate the uh, artery uh, sorry vein first and we'll clip the veins both the vena comma and uh, we usually leave the artery open uh, like on the flap side sir Mm -hmm. Then we will <clears throat> we will take the we'll detach the pedicle and we'll take the uh, we'll detach the uh, pedicle we'll take it to the uh, fibula uh, head and side and uh, firstly we'll do the inserting of mandible <clears throat> the distal part will come uh, anteriorly. You have and... not done a critical part in this whole thing. So the what is the reason we are doing a mandibular reconstruction with the bone? Uh, I think uh... doctor... Listen, IMF. You write in the beginning. IMF, IMF. Ah, so you should say that IMF you have to do or um, if the patient has no deformity in the mandible, you can ask your resection team to hold it. No, pre-plate. Oh, pre-plating, huh? yes sir, yes sir. Oh, you have to say that. Oh, yes, How sir. do we know? So you have to pre-plate and then define your resection. Mm. Or you do a IMF. Mm. So in fact, you should have said we will plan an IMF before. That means put in our eyelet wires before the surgery. Oh, Saves yes. you time. Or you can do it in house, but you are wasting time doing eyelet wiring on the table. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after um, this IMF and uh, achieving the occlusion, we will take the flap to the cranial side and uh, we will fix. Uh, anterior um, part with the rest of the uh, mandible that is remaining using uh, mini plates and screws. So you will fix your mandible at either ends? And... Either end and then, so... uh, then then we will bring the vessels to the neck and mm -hmm. uh, we usually use a uh, sort of facial artery uh, for uh, microvascular anastomosis and mm -hmm. uh, if uh, any uh, good direct tributary to the internal jugular vein. Hmm. So we will do a uh, microvascular anastomosis. Uh, so you have not inset your skin flap. Uh, inserting, sir, uh, uh, partly. Bone, you told us. Huh. sir. So what do you do? You do your uh, anastomosis first, and then do your skin flap anastomosis. Uh, inserting. Sir, we we will uh, uh, we will insert the uh, flap posteriorly. Uh, yes. Possibly, so that uh, we don't have to move the mandible again and again after doing anastomosis. So, posteriorly, we will do inset, and anteriorly, we can leave it for later on. What would you be careful when you are inserting the flap, the skin flap? Mm. Uh, we should take, sir, <clears throat> horizontal mattress suture. More than that, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying it should be. Mouth should be kept open. Yes. 
If you don't do that, you might have restriction in oral cavity opening. If you have us, you can accommodate a smaller flap uh, if the mouth is closed, right? Yes, sir. And the suturing should be watertight towards the... Okay, okay carry on. Then, uh, sir, under microscopic magnification, we will prepare the vessels and we'll do microvascular anastomosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, doing microvascular anastomosis, we will see whether the flap is bleeding or not. So, Priyanka, yes, sir. What is the justification for doing this bony fine flap? Why not just put a PNC in? Huh. Tissue flap? Yes. Overview question. Okay. So. Yes, sir. We will uh, do a bony reconstruction because uh, if bone won't be there, there will be a deviation of uh, mouth and there will be a deformity of uh, the patient. So both functionally and aesthetically, it is not uh, good. And later why on... Will it be, why will it be deformed? Because Reason. Sir, Reason. Bone, bone is not there. So what? So why is the deformity? Tell me why the def what what causes the deformity? What the, causes the deformity? The pull of the mandible to the opposite side. Yeah, who's pulling what? Muscles, sir. Tell us, don't be vague. Muscles, muscles, sir. Muscles. And which muscle? muscle? Come on, you're answering for MCH. You have to tell us which muscles are acting. What sort of a deformity will you get? You know, people don't do reconstruction, bony reconstruction. Some people argue for mm -hmm. the lateral segment. Yes, sir. So you have to know which muscles and how do you counteract them? Mm -hmm. okay. let's, go, let's go to uh, what uh, Dushan said. Let's say we do a PMMC only. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a deviation of the jaw. Yes, sir. Can you do a PMMC for this patient? Uh, yes, Why sir, won't you do a PMMC? So it can be done, but uh, she's a female. So okay. she was a male with the same defect then. Still, what's the argument against PMMC? And that's your justification for a fibula. Sir, uh, argument against PMMC, it is just a... It yes. will provide only a lining. Yeah. It so give a what... bone. Where will the bone deviate? In what two directions or dimensions it will deviate and what will be the implications? Sorry, sorry sir. I'm like unable to. Okay. So first lesson, huh? you have to learn when to say, I don't know. Otherwise, your exam will keep proceeding in that direction. Okay. So one is it will deviate to the opposite side. That will take the occlusion off and cause a cosmetic deformity. Mm -hmm. like another is it will deviate posteriorly also and push the tongue back. So in mm -hmm. the long run, it will cause compression of the airway also. So even for a small defect, a bony reconstruction is well justified. And the overwhelming reason for whole exercise is cosmesis. Your cosmesis mm -hmm. is always way superior with a uh, like for like a reconstruction. Mm -hmm. yes. There is malocclusion also, right? There is malocclusion. Mal mal mm -hmm. So how do you count? Let's say I do a PMMC. Hmm. I mean, I'm compelled to do a PMMC for some reason. Yeah, I can't do okay. microsurgery. I can't do microsurgery. So okay. this malocclusion is going to occur. Hmm, so yes. what do you what do you do postoperatively to counteract that? Can your dental colleagues help you in some way? Some prosthesis. Mm, I don't. I don't know, sir. Guide by prosthesis can be used. Okay. But it has a prerequisite of good mouth opening. Otherwise, it won't work. Because you can't place it in. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. And another factor is the lip support. Because of all these deviations, the lips also lose contact with each other and tend to fall posteriorly. Mm -hmm. so these are all the justifications why you undertook this. So this has to come as a justification when you make the choice of a flap. Okay, sir. Okay. Because now we are in an era we accept reflaps as the first choice. There was a time when examiners didn't use to. Right? Mm -hmm. So, but you have to know that these are the basics you are to work, working towards. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. And you should also know the disadvantage of fibula. Yes, perfect. Donor site. Mm -hmm. Donor site, height of the bone. Uh, height will be uh, mismatched. Critique, critique oh. the fibula. That's what we are saying. Critique Make the a case against it. No. What are the advantages or limitations? Of the fibula? Yes. 
uh, so <clears throat> there will be donor side uh, uh, deformity uh, there will be a patient uh, might have a, a gait uh, change in gait uh, there is a there, there could be a problem in weight bearing uh, no, early, early period what you experience more often all these are very subtle and late problems early period what will you experience uh, so pain pain is the okay will she require a skin graft right Yes, sir. and the donor area we uh, have to put a skin graft, so it uh, it it is not that good aesthetically. Also, sometimes uh, if uh, the tendons are exposed, uh, the there there could be a graft loss, and it could lead to the prolonged uh, wound with the exposed tendon, and patient um, get trouble with it. Yes. Something more specific. What happens to the FHL tendon? Mm. Ah, sir, uh, contracture. Uh, of what contracture of, of what of toe sir great toe great toe so what is that called hammer yes yes see it very good yes sir hammer, hammer. toe deformity mm. so the, these are the donor issues okay long term there might be eczema and all also what is the problems with the fibula bone uh so fibula bone uh, is it is uh, like a relatively short bone it doesn't give that adequate height uh, okay, to the mandible, um, like of the reconstructed mandible. Else? Also, uh, like long term, uh, long term, there could be a um, osteoradial necrosis. Uh, no, uh, something which is more inherent. See, osteoradial necrosis might have a lot of factors: ischemia, how the flap behaves, radiation, something inherent to the bone apart from the height. I mentioned the, it earlier in the discussion. The shape, shape of the bone. Yes. The ridges and shape uh, often might render it they're not very suitable for osteo integration or dental work. Mm. Right. Vascularity of the small pieces can come into question sometimes because oh, it's yeah. not the uh, industrial supply, it's segmental periosteal supply. Mm. And soft tissue? Uh, soft tissue. Uh... Where, sir? Uh, on the... the skin, yeah, so often yeah. for a more posterior line yeah. defect, the soft tissue might be inadequate with the skin part, depending on the donor variability. And mm. sometimes it might be too thick for the intraoral placement and dental work. Okay, sir. So these, no. are, these are marginal things. But okay. Anything else, sir, should we call? What is your option other than fibula? Yes. For bony, bony reconstruction, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, I have said vascularized uh, ileic osteocutaneous flap based on... Uh, so why didn't you choose that? Sir, give us two points because it will carry on otherwise. Huh? Sir, because, two uh, points why you didn't choose DCIA flap? Because of the uh, donor side uh, morbidity, shorter pedicle. Shorter pedicle is one, very good. And... And side morbidity is both there in fibula as well as yeah. this. Uh, we can't uh, mold it as per our uh, requirement. It is a curved bone, sir. So what is its advantage? Advantage is uh, if uh, like angle and uh, ramus and body uh, is uh, no, taken out, what? we can put it. Uh, in it you can take ramus and body shapes also. Something but, uh, of quality of bone. Huh. It is a cortical cancellous bone. Yeah, it's a thick, yeah, thick bone. You can get bone height in this patient, uh, these uh, these DCI flaps. Ha, yes, sir, we can get If you that. want to take, the one problem is taking skin along with this. Uh, it would be a I'm problem. Hmm. Okay. So it will become very bulky because the hmm. fat, subcutaneous fat, or you take a separate <laughs> skip flap with DCI, which is makes it a little more complicated. Yes, sir. You know your advantage. And uh, and fixation, fixation of the fibular segment by the mini plate and the use of uh, a single plate which over over overlaps the fibula. Hmm. Which one is better? Why you prefer the mini plates to fix? Mini plates mean the small plates for the fixation of the each segments. Uh, yes, sir. sir uh, either uh, can be used, but uh, literature says that the recon plate has a better uh, uh, like it is uh, better than the mini plate sense group because uh, it gives additional support to the fibula but in our center we use mini plate sense groups only sir why 
there is a justification for it why what is the pathology of this patient malik uh, uh, carcinoma sir yes what will they receive post operatively ha ah, so because when post operatively patient will receive radiation if we use a larger uh, plate that uh, longer segment of plate then the dissipation of heat will be more and as a result of this it could be uh, like the area there are now some uh, low profile econ plates also which almost look like a mini plate so ah. we are still uh, working over there and doing okay sir Anything else, sir? No, I think you know, there is no end to these discussions. So, uh, I think he, she's done well. Otherwise, yeah, she's done very well. major, you have to know advantages, disadvantages. Fibula, DCI, I think these are the three. If yes, you sir. are uh, thorough in those uh, points, advantages and disadvantages, is fine. Yes, it's sir. not that you can't take a, a pec major in a female. You can. You have, Then they'll ask you where you cite your island. So, no, learn all that. Okay, sir. So and uh, and uh, and uh, fixation is one. Fixation can be a quite a intricate. How do you? And everybody has their own choice. Hmm. That's fine. And your post-operative care is what? Uh, yes, sir. So we will advise patient uh, not to do weight bearing for at least three to four weeks. Oh, early, early post-operative. Post -op, Early post -op, immediate. Uh, immediate will immobilize the limb uh, using a po uh, POP slab. So, because we have grafted that area. And also, what for about, the... What about thromboprophylaxis? Uh, sir, uh, we, no. we don't give actually thromboprophylaxis. No, no, no. Uh, Whatever you practice, say that. Yes, Whatever sir. you are practicing in your hospital and if you are... Uh, following that, you should follow. Don't change your protocol because you read it somewhere. We are you not... can defend it if you've seen it. Hmm. You'll be excused. But if you say something which you've not seen, then you'll have to justify that. Yes, sir. Just Another say whatever you've seen and look at your internal. Sorry, sir? Say whatever you've seen and you can look at your internal examiner after that. <laughs> to back you. Okay. <laughs> Another important thing, while you are doing the pack measure in supra and neck dissection, you don't get the sufficient space to travel the pedicle of the pack measure. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes that's also a factor. Hmm. So, Priyanka, I think that is nice. Uh, I, I think uh, almost uh, we have covered the entire uh, questioning this one as examiners. I think this is the only thing that we normally ask and probably something to do with the uh, deltopectoral flaps uh, and maybe forehead flaps also in some cases some examiners might ask about forehead flaps you should know how you uh, take it into the oral cavity and into it obviously how do you how you plan the forehead flaps so i think those are the things that normally uh, they would ask for a, a buccal mucosal uh, reconstruction